So this game, like I said, I played the demo, really liked it. It's a point and click visual novel, like literally a visual novel because there's a book. Uh, characters are woodland creatures. They're very cute. There's like a mystery involved. Dear reader. Allow me to introduce oh, you to my book. It's voiced. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. May therefore have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. I'm special. <laughs> Without you, there is no story. Chapter one. Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. He's His so name cute. is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. Hey, Dad. How are things going? Today's the first day of summer vacation. He is so cute. I start middle school next year, I guess. I was six years old when you died. And it's been six years now. From here on out, you'll have been gone longer than you were here. It feels like that should mean something. Mom always said that this tree was your favorite spot on the world in the world. Me too. Hey, Luca. I knew I'd find you here. Rollo was Luca's closest friend. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. Sounds like Cooper. Well, after I banged on your door till your gran answered, and after I checked the ponds and climbed up to the treehouse, then I knew I'd find you here. Rollo finally noticed the tears welling in his friend's eyes and the flowers on the grave. Oh, yeah, right. You and your mom always did this on your dad's birthday. Yeah. I didn't know if you were going to keep doing it now that your mom's gone too. Dang, sir, can you not like be this blunt? She's not gone. She's just missing. Sorry, I meant to say since she went missing. She's going to come back, Rolo. Of course she is. Okay, Dad. See you next time. Well, this is already really sad. I think I'm going to get out of here. Sure, lead the way. Flowers. Same, though. Same. Tickle. We got a charm. So, from what I remember of this game, as you, like, explore, you kind of, you find these charms throughout the world. Wait. And you can use them for certain things. Uh. Wonderful. Okay. I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. Well, thanks. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. Yeah, you gotta find the charms and then they do things throughout the story. <laughs> He's so cute with the little thingies. Okay. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. The whole reason I was looking for you. Oh, hang on. I was wondering if you'd ever get to that. I found the perfect way to start our summer. How's that? Rollo looked to the side suspiciously. Not here. They might be watching. They who? Shh, not so loud. We need to do this in a secure location. Mission control. All right, I just have to tell Gran and then we can head out. What are you going to tell her? I don't know. I'll think of something. If it's all the same to you, I'll meet you at the welcome sign. Your Gran still kind of wakes me out. I don't do well with new people. 
She moved in like half a year ago. Just meet me at the sign when you're done. See it yourself. I won't be long. Okay, bye. Tell Gran before heading out with Rolo. Okay, so I guess we get notes. Ooh, okay. How do I? Oh, I just do that. Okay. The Dear Fire leader, Nation is watching. me for this interlude. Oh, it's okay. I Remember forgive you. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? Yes. There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. Oh boy. Okay. Let's find charms. Just some dusty knickknacks. Aw. I don't want dusty knickknacks. Is there anything in the couch? Like old cereal? Since Gran had moved in, the house was more peaceful, more orderly, and more covered in flowery fabric. Hey, I like flowery fabric. Does that mean I'm a grandma? Gran had already lit the fire. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmotherly obligation. Okay, this music is really nice. I like it. Ha! I can chill! Oh! We got one! Ponder! Okay. Oh my god, the way he slides off the chair. One I feel of his that. Father's old stethoscopes. Oh. Luca had spent countless hours listening to anything and everything with it. Not for years, though. I guess his dad was a doctor? I want to sit by a fireplace in a cozy house, right? I do too. Can I go upstairs? Oh, I can. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. Poor guy. Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. Ooh, okay, we got hide. Nothing in there. Gran's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. Okay, this must be his bed, but it doesn't look like I can do anything with it. Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Even though it was the oh first God. day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. He's so cute with his little sweater. Look at him. He's chilling like a villain. Okay, what's in here? Grand's moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. Okay, I think... I think that's everything here. Oh, here's the kitchen. The only piece of furniture Grand had brought when she moved in was an old hutch. We turned on the sink. A pair of dull scissors, a broken can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. Junk. Okay. An array of prepared meals crowded the refrigerator, each labeled with the day of the week. Oh my, this is quite exciting. I am now certain that you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. Oh, good. I'm glad. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Excuse me. I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. I love this narrator, by the way. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Okay. Step forth, dear reader. Oh, there's Grandma. All right, hold on. A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. Look at this garden. I see lavender. I see lavender. That's Young my favorite. Young would spend hours hiding in the bushes, waiting for a chance to jump out and startle his mother. She always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. I do that with my kids, too. Mom is missing. Dad is dead. And there is a mysterious they. Thus, every hero's journey starts, right? I'm thinking this isn't going to be like the super cute, cozy game that we all think it's going to be. I have a feeling it's going to get pretty dark. And based on the demo, it looked like it was heading in that direction. Hey, Gran, I'm going to go hang out with Rolo for the day. See you later. Hold up now. Where are you and Rolo headed exactly? Oh, nowhere special. The less Gran knew, the better for everyone involved. 
we were just gonna go blank for the day. So it's kind of like, this is the part I remember. This is kind of like Mad Libs. So you get these charms, right? We can say ponder, hide, or chill. And depending on your choices, things are gonna change. Now, obviously I think chill is the correct answer here, but you can say any of them. We were just gonna go chill for the day. We were just gonna go chill for the day. The lies are built on truth. You boys are always in a hurry to do nothing. We stick to what we're good at. We'll make sure you are done chilling in time for supper. Easy. So impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. That is the power of charms. A single word can change everything. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. Okay. You can see the turning point, which has been revealed. It's a flower. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. That's ominous. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. We were just gonna go hide for the day. We were just gonna go hide for the day. I love this narrator. Hide? Traditionally, when one is trying to hide something, they avoid literally <laughs> using the word hide. Yeah, I guess Rolo bet some other kids that we could beat them at hide and seek? Aren't you a little old for that? It's not like there's much else to do around here. Well, make sure you boys are done playing your little game in time before also, supper. But ends well. And then we can do the same thing with uh, Ponder. We were just going to go ponder. We were just going to go ponder for the day. As you do. Oh, really? What are you boys going to ponder on such a lovely day, exactly? This was Luca's chance to sell his alibi. Um, you know, big stuff. Mm -hmm. I also go in the middle of nowhere and ponder big stuff. Small stuff, medium, mostly medium pondering. Nailed it. Well, make sure you don't overburden, or overburden yourself with a preponderance of pondering. Huh? Oh, forget it. Off with you now. I ponder pawn prawn at the pawn shop. Exactly. All right, so we did all of them. I guess it doesn't matter which one I stick with. It doesn't seem to affect the story. That's what the narrator said. Oh, and Luca, you and Rolo stay out of trouble. I know, I know. Get into trouble with Rolo. <laughs> okay, game. Gonna disobey grandma for you. Let's see if we can find, I, I wanna see if I can find any other charms. Like, I don't know if they show up everywhere. Look at me, chillaxing at the fence. Come on, come on. Woo! <laughs> this, this child is Cooper. Like, holy crap, he is my son. Dang it, Rolo. I mean, more like Cooper when he was like seven, but still Cooper. Wait, what's down here? Can I go, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is there anything over here? Is there anything over here? For a town that saw a few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring, a sort of natural barrier for the impatient. You know the drill. Don't let anyone discover our secret path. Walking backwards is the way to do that, I guess. Chapter 2. Welcome to Beacon Pines. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered until the foul harvest and his sudden death. Wait, so the foul harvest killed Sharper Valentine. Okay. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by.
Hey, Mr. Kerr. Hey there, pal. William Kerr was the CEO of Perennial Harvest Company. What is this smile? It's actually creeping me out. He had become a fixture around town over the past few years. After the failing of Valentine Fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. Excited for the big festival? Oh, um, sure. Come now, when I was your age, there was nothing more exciting than a town festival. <laughs> Not sure if the smile means I want to consume your soul or eat your flesh. Yeah. Sounds pretty all right. You're gosh dang right it is. I'm looking forward to letting off some steam myself. Make sure to invite all of your little friends so I can consume their souls. Like, sir, you were creeping me out. I couldn't keep Rolo away if I tried. Excellent. Sorry, Luca, I've got to get back to the proverbial grindstone. Our harvest awaits and all that harvesting souls, right? Ho oh, now. Okay, so last time I played this, the left side's a little low. Last time I played this, this guy did not exist. Um, I, Like I said, I played the demo. I would remember him for sure. I played the demo. He wasn't here last time. So they've added some characters since I last played it. Oh, look, at he looks like a sad doge. Sorry, Mr. Van Horn. Can't talk now. Very busy with preparations. Here, Augustus Valentine was not busy. <laughs> oh, sorry, Gus. How many times do I? It's Mayor Valen. <sighs> Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie. Okay, bye. Keep up the good work. I must briefly attend to a concerned citizen. I love this narrator. I need to know who it is because they're really, really good. Huh? It's nothing. Keep at it. All right. What can the mayor of Beacon Pines do for you today? Oh, just saying hi, I guess. Hmm. Well, good day to you too, young Mr. Van Horn. Hey, Mr. Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair continued snoring and lifted one eyelid just enough to see who it was. A tactic he often used to avoid undesirable conversation. <laughs> Yoo-hoo, Mr. Sinclair. Ugh, don't you see I'm sleeping, boy? How's the napping today? Crummy as always. Used to have a perfectly nice view from here. Till perennial harvest put that monstrosity of a building in the way. Why don't you just move your chair a bit? Oh, wait, that was him. Never mind. Why should I be the one that moves? If it's a showdown they want, I ain't going to be the one who blinks. Honk shoe, honk shoe. Okay. So, yeah, I don't think Perennial Harvest was here when I did the demo either. Come on, Andy, grab his wallet. I'm sorry, Iggy, I can't. Do we do it or we pound ya? Yep. Yeah, but my mom said, yeah, but, yeah, but. If I had a nickel for every yeah, but, I'd be the freaking king of nickels. Ain't that right, Tish? Yup. She looks like Pearl from uh, SpongeBob. <laughs> I mean, she's a rhinoceros and Pearl is a whale, but they kind of remind me of each other. Mr. Van Horn, do you have a moment? It's just Luca. Golly, I'm sorry. It's my first week at Perennial Harvest. He pulled a pen from the pocket of his sweater vest and began to frantically jot something down on a clipboard. Wonderful. It won't happen again. If we are going to be on a name on a first name basis, then you can call me Pete. Oh, nice to meet you, Pete. Sorry, what are you writing? Oh, just documenting. Gosh, it's exciting to be a part of something so darn special. You know, it's not just about new fountains and phone booths. We're going to change the world. And it all starts here in Beacon Pines. Isn't that amazing? Oh, uh, uh-huh. Anyway, I'd better get... Oh, that reminds me. We'd love to hear your thoughts. My thoughts? You bet. If we're going to change this town, we need to get every detail right. That sounds intense. <laughs> Changing the world is intense. So what do you say? Could you answer a few questions? Well, I guess if it's quick. Wonderful. Open to answering a few quick questions. One down. See, it's not that hard, is it? Oh, okay. We're going already. Question two. What is something you love about Beacon Pines? I uh, never really thought about it before. Perfect. It's the only place I've ever lived. See, that wasn't so painful. Stopped scribbling and glanced up from the clipboard. 
What is it? Wait, was it? Uh, I guess not. Huzzah! Our three questions answered. Okay. Are you literally writing everything down? Thank you so much for your time. I need to process these answers. We can save the rest of your thoughts for later. Okay. Our harvest awaits. Okay, okay, bye. Oh, Rolo's waiting up at the treehouse. Let's go to the treehouse then. Also, was there anything else to see? Like, grab charms or anything? Hey, Judson. Is the line playing any tunes today? No bites this morning, I'm afraid. Come to think of it, I can't remember the last time I reeled one in. But hey, it was never about the catch. This is where I come to think. To ponder, if you will. Yeah, that's what Dad used to do here. That reminds me. If you ever want this chair back, I've taken to standing recently. Keeps me from falling asleep at the reel. If you don't mind, I think it should stay. Not at all. An empty chair makes for a great listener. Wait, so can I sit in Whenever this? Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. Oh, is that his dad? Go pick out your bait from the tackle box, buckaroo. Luca opened the tackle box and picked the perfect bait. Oh, junk would probably make more sense for this. Luca tied a shoestring to the hook. What fish could resist a nice shoestring? I have no idea. You'll have to reel it in a bit faster or your catch will lose interest. Heh. Oh, was I supposed to do something? Hold on. Oh, I got to hold it. Okay. Oh, shoot. It's like... It's like spirit fairer. Okay. I got to be careful. I think we're doing okay. Oh, we got a boot. Cool. Where do you think the other one is? Hard to say. Sometimes things drift away. That's not fair. No, it's not. Well, wherever it is, I hope that the other boot at least has a sock to keep it company. <laughs> Go pick out your bait. Oh, wait. Oh, what happens if I do tickle? Luca gently baited a feather onto oh. the hook. Good for skimming the surface. Okay. I feel like I'm doing this right. It feels very spirit fairer. I got a ducky. Well, I'll be switched. It's your old rubber ducky. You were just a little drooling ball of fur when you lost that. Cried for days. I told you it'd turn up. <laughs> I'll hail the ducky. <laughs> All right. Well, I did both of those. I guess I can. Can I take these? No, I cannot. Looks like we could use some new bait. What do you say we head out and find some more? Am I supposed to just leave? Maybe. Okay. Mission control. Authorized personnel only. For a secret base? Rolo's not doing a very good job of keeping it secret. The boys had a good thing going. As long as they kept old Jeff happy, they had an endless source of precious materials to add to the treehouse. You know, I think when I did the demo that there... I don't recall there being a narrator. So they probably added that later. I'm going to chill on this. That looks like it needs to be cleaned, actually. After Lucas' rocket? father had passed, Rolo became obsessed with them building their own Hank Atomic Star Scraper. It was some time before Luca realized it was Rolo's way of keeping him occupied. Aww. On certain nights, when the clouds were just right, the boys could tune into strange patterns of static. Rolo thinks it's aliens. He <laughs> always thinks it's aliens. Luca's winter coat decommissioned for the summer. With the cold holding out longer than usual, he reconsidered its usefulness. This music is so nice. Okay, what's this top, top secret plan for our start of summer? So you know the abandoned warehouse by my place? The old Valentine building? Yeah, well, it isn't abandoned. What makes you think that? Get this. Last night, it was glowing. Glowing? Are you sure? Kinda. This place has been empty since... Since the foul harvest? Yeah. Who would even want to poke around that place? We would, Rolo. We would. Wait, 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 wait. It's just a busted old warehouse. I just meant we could do some research at the library. You want to actually go to the warehouse? What do you expect to find? 
answers. My mom's out there somewhere. And it seems like everyone wants to pretend that she's gone for good. You don't have to come, Rolo, if you don't want to. Oh, he's starting to cry. Luca, remember that time I sort of accidentally burned down the chicken coop? How? And you jumped in and said it was your fault before my pa throttled me? This is a flaming chicken coop sort of deal. I got your back. Thanks, Rolo. A flaming chicken coop sort of deal. Now that I think about it, poking around a decrepit fertilizer warehouse is exactly how I want to spend the first day of summer. Let's go! Oh my god. So I think we have two... Oh yeah, here he is. You guys... Nope, you don't have anything new to say. Did you... I'm just catching my breath a bit. Go on, I'll catch up. Oh my god. I kind of love him. Ooh, there's more stuff. Oh, I can't go that way. I do remember Holden meeting- Wilder ran the local paper of record. I do remember meeting this guy in the demo. The Beacon Beacon. The Beacon Beacon. Hey, Mr. Wilder. Morning, Luca. What's the day have in store for you? I was wondering if you heard any news about- News? The Beacon Beacon news- The, 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 the Beacon Beacon knows the news that needs knowing. Help. Any news about the old fertilizer warehouse? Nope. Oh. Rolo thought he saw some lights there last night. Hmm, Rolo ought to be careful poking around that part of town. The winds of change are blowing, and change is a dangerous animal. Ooh, change. So talking to people will get me some charms too, it looks like. Hey, Miss Nelson. Good morning, Luca. Any big plans for the summer? Not really. Heard anything about the old fertilizer, bleh, fertilizer warehouse? Any strange happenings? Can't say I have. Either way, a dusty old warehouse is no place for a young boy. You be safe now. Can I just say it's hilarious that the rabbit lady has a baby who's clearly still an infant because they're in that kind of stroller and she is pregnant again because, you know, breeding like rabbits. Oh, there's stuff up here. Okay. Classic rabbits. Um, Piper? Oh, hey, Luca. What's up? You know, it's summer break, right? Of course. And it's like the morning. Correct. And you're studying? Like they say, the early bird gets the proper education required for a successful and fulfilling career later in life. Mm hmm. Hey, Zariel. Wait, as in. As in Zariel from. From Dungeons and Dragons? She's like the demon of the nine hells? Hey, Luca. Can you please tell this lazy butt to help out in the cafe? Um, Lumi, Zariel would like you. Luca, let me give you a little gem of advice. You never, if you never do what you don't love, then you'll never work a day in your life. Wow, you're really setting up the kid for success. <laughs> she seems a lot nicer than Zariel from D&D. Miss Hatch could often be found near the fountain. Too absorbed in a book to be distracted. She's a, is she a crocodile alligator? I'm not sure which one, she's cute. The two wandered down the wooden path, unaware of the dangers ahead. Oh, oh, this is getting good. Luca, just the fella I was looking for. Hey, Roxy, what's up? Oh, right, rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. Oh boy. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? Have you seen my blockhead brother today? He skipped out before breakfast. Well, not really, no. Can't say I have. Can't say or won't say. Roxy, would I lie to you? <laughs> oh, God. Luca, wait up. I almost forgot to tell you. Roxy might be lurking around here. This is one of her favorite places to stand around and be useless. Uh, Rollo? So we need to make sure she doesn't spot us. Rollo? <laughs> Why are you doing that turning thing with your body? What? You're not scared, are you? She's harmless. And a chump. And she's right around the corner, isn't she? get into trouble with Rolo. Well, we did that. Don't mind me just over here lurking uselessly. Oh, hey, sis. Nice weather we're having, eh? I couldn't help but notice you snuck out this morning before breakfast. 
wasn't hungry. Also couldn't help but notice your morning chores were left unchored. Roxy, I'm gonna level with you. I'm sick and tired of digging up carrots. We gotta pick up the slack since the foul harvest. Almost every car I dig up is rotten. And the rest looked like they were hit with Hank, o Hank Atomic Shrink Array. All the more reason to keep on digging. There's gotta be more to life than puny carrots. Look, Rocky. Rocky? Roxy? Luke and I have places to be, so if you don't mind, breakfast and chores, what do those matter when adventure awaits? Exactly. So this is interesting, this foul harvest thing. I'm really curious about what that's all about because they keep mentioning it. I think it killed the previous mayor of the town and it might be why the mother is missing too, but it also seems to be affecting their crops as well. Oh, I do mind. I'm not gonna catch hell again because of you. So either you march home and harvest those carrots or I haul you home myself. Ooh, we got a thing. Rollo froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Okay, I guess we don't have a choice. We have to use chill. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Come on, Roxy, it's the first day of summer. The sun's shining and we just want to take it easy. Let's leave tomorrow's problems for tomorrow. That's great and all, but Rolo's problems have a way of becoming my problems. And Pa always says, tomorrow's work is best left for yesterday. March, you big oaf. Aw, oh, rats. I expect a full report about the Valentine place. Investigate the Valentine warehouse alone. So, Fitz. What are you up to this lovely day? Nope. Uh, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Denied. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wait, there's more down here. Hey, Bert. Hi, Luca. I'm doing some fact checking for the town history exhibit. Look, kid, I'm just here to put up the lights. But did you know when the town was founded, there were only seven citizens? And they all worked for a mining company. And there was only one dirt road leading to town. And, okay, no, I take it back. This is Cooper. There is still only one road leading to the town. Oh, right. Hey, Griffin. How's the ice cream gig going? Not great. It's still pretty cold out. And I'm in the business of selling cold. I'm sure things will warm up soon. Mr. Tolliver is not at his grocery stand. He's prepping for the festival, I guess. Gotcha. Okay. What do we got here? Anything I can grab? I want a pastry. No touching. Oh! I said no touching, Luca. Can't believe he just smacked it. All right, let's go this way. Wait. Sharper Valentine, founder of Beacon Pines. Ooh, he's a dog? Never underestimate what a great man can do given time. A bit much, if you ask me. Indulgent. Who is this dapper little lad? Hello, Solomon. Apologies, no time for chit chat. Aw, but you're so cute. <laughs> Looks like the library hasn't opened yet. I'll check back later. Oh my God, I love all the dogs in this game. Luca, my boy, hold up a tick. Oh, hey, Mr. Nuncreed, I was just on my way to... I just sold the last jar of your grandmother's preserves. Can't stock the shelves fast enough, it turns out. Hey, that's great, but I'm actually... I guess Juniper will just have to swing by with more of her lovely jam. Uh-huh. Well, don't let this old man slow you down. You just remind her that she still owes me that dance. Oh, Upon do you have... Gran regretted the second it was made. Does he have a crush? Will do. She's a fine woman, that Juniper. Yeah, she's pretty cool, I guess. A real fine was sir! You're talking to her grandson? Calm down. Uh, gotta go. Sweeter than- Oh, okay, we're leaving. Nope, we are leaving. <laughs> we're leaving. Ooh, a phone. The phone booth was brand new. Part of Perennial Harvest's Beacon Pines Reborn initiative. It didn't see much use. I wonder, like, what time period this is. Wait, could I go the other way? Oh, there's somebody here. Oh, hey, Luca. Hey, Joey. How's the bug hunt going? Not great. Bugs have been shy this week. Bugs get shy? Sure. Bugs aren't that different from people. 
sometimes they just want to be left alone. If you're gonna into if you're going into weep wood, just be careful where you step. No bug crunching, got it? Let's see if there's anything to gather while I'm here. Cause it seems like there's stuff to get along the way. Luca peeked up at the beehive. It appeared to be deserted. Can I take it? Hmm, that's strange. I guess I don't Ooh, what's this? This is creepy as hell. After the foul harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines shuttered off their estate from the rest of town. Creepy mansion, check. The Valentine mansion loomed over every other building in town, both figuratively and literally. Huh. I don't remember this being in the demo. I think they must have added it later. Can't go in. Oh, I can jump? I only just noticed that. All right. Jumpy, jumpy, jumpy. I didn't know I could do this. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weepwood. This is creepy. Okay, no turning back now. Oh, we're going in. Caution, electrified fence. Is that sign new? The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Okay, so what would Rollo do if he was here? Probably run straight into Luca it. Luca often asked himself what Rollo would do, so that he could rule out that option. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely not touching that thing. Okay. Wait, what's this? As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. Ah. Oh, wait, I get it. Okay, hold on. That's One two. To go. So apparently you can just turn this thing off by throwing mushrooms at it. That seems like a really bad oversight. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. Okay, moment of truth. Oh no, wait, wait, let's stop. I wanted to see if there was anything else to Every take. Every kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer Building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Now, it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. Okay, so Rolo wasn't exaggerating for once. What's going on here? There was only one way to find out. Wow, that smells awful. Too bad Rolo's not here. He'd have no problem poking around in there. It's like, is it draining? Is something draining into there? The hose emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. Into the water? That's bad. The water looked almost diseased. It and flowed slowly into the woods. I'm stepping in it. Great, cool, wonderful. Anything else to grab? I don't think so. Locked. Luca thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. Do you want monsters? Because that's how you get monsters. Exactly. I know, Del. Everybody is adorable in this game. They're all cute little woodland creatures. But I have a feeling... I have a feeling this game isn't going to be super chill and cozy. I, it's, it has some dark undertones, so I'm really interested to see where it goes. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. A zipper? Footsteps? The sound of footsteps grew louder. Hello? Oh no! Shit? Now, why did I get that? The heavy steel door knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. Go back to Roxy! It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door into the lab, into the green light. This is a story about... change? This is a story about change. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. The end? I probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. 
Okay, it's like a choose your own adventure novel then. Most will end in tragedy, but don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different.